Hey guys, it's Rob with Japan Made Games. We are going to be learning how to play Terrifying Girl Disorder today. The way that you play Ter Terrifying Girl Disorder is broken up into five steps. You have your setup, your counseling stage, your regain memory stage, cleanup or end of round, and then end of game. We're actually going to start from the end. We're going to kind of do like a Tarantino movie type of thing. We're going to start with the scoring system, all right? Uh, the reason why we're going to start with the scoring system is it kind of informs the rest of play. So you're going to see up on the screen the same cheat sheet I'm looking at. If you look at this cheat sheet, you see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven terrifying girls, theoretically all of which have disorders, okay? And essentially, the way that it works is each of them is like a card suit. Don't worry about so much of what's going on, especially because mine's in Japanese. I'm going to flip it over. Now it's in English. And pay more attention to the fact that imagine them as clubs, spades, diamonds, hearts, and recognize that this is a set collection game. And each of these represents a set. Essentially, the way it works is we're going to play the game collecting cards, interacting with each other for five rounds. Then at the end of the game, the player with the most of a single one of these suits will align that as their true identity. They will then score points based on their true identity. So say, let's for example, I went with Chigaya. Chigaya, um, the way she works is pretty linear. If you have one card, you get zero points. Two cards, you get one point. Three cards, you get seven points. Four of her, you get 11 points. Five of her or more, you get 13 points, okay? And you get bonus victory points for one uh, for each Chigaya card in uh, all recollection areas, which we'll go over shortly. Um, in addition, she has a skill in which you can choose a card from any recollection area and move to any other. That's when you play her out, which we'll get to. So what you see, guys, is each of the characters has different strengths and weaknesses and different styles of play. Enju, she wants to get more cards towards the middle number, so three cards, whereas um, Tsutsuji wants to get the least amount of cards possible. Uh, and basically the way it works is, once you get your identity at the end of the game, you'll count up your points and you'll determine who the victor is based on that. It's really important to get that out of the way first before we start the game. So, let's begin. Every player gets dealt four cards. Okay, these are face down. All right, these represent the basis of our memories because the way Terrifying Girl Disorder works is we were all very powerful espers or people with psychic powers, if you're not into anime, um, who were locked away in an academy and because all anime take place in a school. For whatever reason, I don't make the rules, but we have to follow them. And... Then we all lost our memory. So this is us trying to regain our memory. And these wedges represent the shards of whatever we're trying to hold on to. And that's a pretty elaborate setup for a uh, what is essentially a set collecting game. So if we have four players, we deal out 12 cards here. And if we have three players, we deal out nine. You can only play with three or four players. All right. I'm going to deal out 12 because we are playing with a fake four right now. I don't know why I'm dealing face down again. I do not know why. I don't know why I do the things that I do, but I do them. I'm starting to crowd my own area here. Someday I'll get good at this, but that's not anytime soon. What am I doing? Um. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, it always gets scrunched. All right, this is our circle that we have formed. All right, now that we have four cards in hand, 12 cards in the center, little counter is set to clockwise, we may begin. Starting player... Gets, it gets us to go, and the starting player determines our little counter, and I'm going to keep it on clockwise, and I'm going to keep myself as the starting player uh, because we're really only going to play my turns during this playthrough. Uh, I'm not yet at the stage where I can play a four-player ga game with myself. That's uh, 
We'll get there. We'll get there. But, uh, so, to start, we have the counseling. Okay? So, the counseling is done in turn order, starting with the start player. So, I'm the start player. We're going to go around the map like this. Okay? I am the green wedge. This is the yellow wedge, purple wedge. Uh, we can't. Pink wedge, purple wedge. I was like, that's also purple. Um... Oh, I'm sorry. We must go clockwise, which I am going. Okay. I was right all along. I was merely testing you guys. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place a wedge. So I'm the first player. I'm going to place a wedge. Essentially what I'm doing is the card that I put the wedge on, I gain that card and all cards to the right before hitting another wedge. So I'm going to take a look at my hands here. I'm going to realize, holy moly. Look at all these Sutsujis. I like that. So I want to guarantee for myself that I grab up the only Sutsuji on the board. I don't know if that's a great strategy, but we're going with it. So I pop my wedge on the Sutsuji because I just have a feeling that that's who I am. I think I've always felt like a Sutsuji on the inside anyway. We're going to go around clockwise order. Players may not place a wedge within one of each of my wedge. So they can only go from here like that and this player just for the sake of argument is just going to go right here uh, because I'm not trying to stop myself same thing this player just gonna go right here and this player is gonna go right here okay our circle is complete this is the place wedge phase it's now over all right now the recollection phase um here the player tries to sort their memory. I may now play cards from my hand as long as they are all of the same suit. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to play Nagira. So I draw two random cards from another player's hand and add them to mine. So I'm just going to grab this player and I'm going to say, I don't like you very much. I'm going to draw their... <laughs> I draw two Nagiras. That's not good for me. And I'll explain why. Because once I have played a card... Doesn't matter if it's this round, next round, third round, fourth round, fifth round even, the last round. I may never play another Nagira again unless extenuating circumstances on cards occurs. So, that's it. I just drew two dead cards because Nagira may never be played. And now I must give two cards, um, then give two cards uh, two of your cards to that player. So I'm going to give them back my Nagiris. Because I don't want them. I do not want them. And I'd rather keep my Susujis. I'm going to butcher that word more and more every time I say it. So strap in. Buckle up. Um, then it would pass clockwise. They would then play their cards. Would then play their cards. Would then play their cards. Remember, you can... Once you play one of a suit, you play all cards in your hand of that suit. All right? They all go down. All right? And you may never play them again except in one specific circumstances and then a bunch of non-specific circumstances. The specific circumstance is when you absolutely have no cards you can possibly play. You reveal your hand to your opponent, show them that you can't play any cards, then you may play a card from your hand that you have already played before. Okay, now guys, that was the recollection step. Everybody went. Now we go to the regain memory. We regain the card that was under our wedge. We gain our wedge back, and we gain all the cards clockwise. Next turn, it'll be counterclockwise. So I gain those cards, add them to my hand. Make sure to not mix up your Nagira in there. Okay, and everybody else follows suit. Yeah. If you catch my lingo, guys. All right. Bam. Boom. So do you see? Everything's played out. Everything's good. I definitely switch wedges. I do not care about this game uh, uh, <laughs> following the rules for these guys. Really, it's just me who I'm trying to teach you with. All right. That was round one. End of round. Okay, the player who played the most cards during the counseling step 
They get to be the start player next. No one else played any cards here, though they would have ordinarily. But let's just imagine it'll be me. Bam, I get to go first again. I'm going to deal out the cards, the new cards. One, two, three. 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 And one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, there we go, guys. We would then revert back to the beginning. We would go to the counseling step. Uh, we would then go to the place wedge step, the recollection step, regain our memories, determine who the start player is, go again. We would do this for five turns every game. Once five turns is up, we would see which player has the most of each suite. The player who has the most in a single suit or suit, suit, the talking too much. Player with the most of each suit would then be that would be their real identity. They would regain their memory. Uh, if they have multiple wins of different personalities. They would choose one of them, and that would become their real identity. And if they have no identities, they would then become uh, the secret identity, which is on the scoring board, which is Hegan. Okay? You would then determine point score, and then you'd have your winner. Terrifying Girl Disorder, pretty simple game. Don't let kind of the strange setup intimidate you uh, because, honestly, it's pretty easy, pretty fun. There's a lot of nuance of play in terms of placing these wedges. You know, uh, you'd think um, the strategy would be simple, but as you play more and more, you're going to see that, that things become more complex. Great game to play with your friends, just a party where um, maybe you don't want to get into something super intense. Uh, and... Uh, the art is fantastic. Really love it. And uh, this will be available soon through Japanime Games. So check it out. You can pre-order it now on our website at japanimegames.com. If you have any questions, email me at info at Japanime Games. Or just leave a comment on this YouTuber. And uh, I will respond to that. Uh, this has been Terrifying Girl Disorder, guys. Uh, like I said, uh, yeah, give it a shot. Give it a try. And I'll see you guys for the next video. Have a good one, gang.